My name is Elvis Ray, and uh, I'm on the board of directors for a nonprofit organization that is called Heal Corps. And basically, our focus is to help um, and um, go through uh, areas that have been through any kind of civil unrest or uh, contribute into humanitarian efforts in places and countries uh, here and afar. International. Back in 2022, when I first heard about the uh, invasion of Ukraine, uh, I was definitely deeply concerned about the people and the personnel that were involved and uh, the crimes against humanity that was going to about to take place because of the fact that um, the Russian government and what they were trying to achieve in order to take a place like Ukraine that I now know and have been there and seen, uh, they weren't going to go down without a fight, for sure. When I was in Ukraine, uh, a lot of the stuff that we initiate, uh, initially started doing were uh, to provide support in the means of um, MREs or meals ready to eat, uh, supplies, uh, medical equipment and anything that they would need to in order to support uh, the humanitarian efforts that were going on. Um, once, uh, once we became involved and went closer to the front lines, uh, like areas uh, in Bakhmud and uh, Kherson, uh, we saw much more devastation. Uh, and when it came to the crimes against humanity there, um, it wasn't more of what we were able to see, but from the survivors, the stories that they were able to tell, um, it really took uh, took a toll on a lot of a lot of our people that were working there. But uh, in in other means, it also uh, just let us know that there was way more that we needed to do uh, to help source and outfit our personnel to not only take care of these people uh, physically but also mentally because of all the trauma that they have endured and that they're going to continue to endure for probably the next decades to come, unfortunately. Jacksonville actually has a, a community of Ukrainians that they have actually um, adapt, you know, adopted, and uh, they actually have a lot of uh, refugees that are here. Um, there's been a certain number of groups that have actually provided, uh, um, opened up their homes. And um, when it comes to donations, uh, during the beginning of the war, uh, there was many contributions that were, that, that Jacksonville was, uh, was definitely very, very um, uh, able to help out and, um, and contribute a lot to. So I've been in this kind of theater several times uh, because of my military experience. Uh, I've seen I've seen uh, stuff like this uh, ever since uh, some of my deployments uh, in in Iraq or other uh, hostile environments. And uh, the one thing that I took uh, to heart and that actually that I never experienced before is, for me, uh, this was the first time that I was a father and going into this kind of environment. Uh, whereas before it didn't quite uh, affect me like it did, but uh, I now have a two-year-old and um, <clears throat> I also have a, uh, a little girl that's now uh, four months old. And uh, when I had to leave, um, my wife actually had just given birth and uh, she was only six weeks old. So uh, the time that I was there kind of... Uh, just seeing the hardship that the families and the women and most, most of all the children that went through, um, there's people that have been without power since this war has started. Uh, they just went through a brutal winter and uh, not only with all the devastation and all the genocide that they had all experienced, but just seeing the children, uh, that was a part that really, um, I, I had to take a step back and and really gather my thoughts and understand, um, you know, why I was there. And um, being in a country like America, um, sorry. sorry, being in a country like America, uh, we have the conveniency to not 
be aware of what's going on around the world. Um, and I, at the same time, I wish we would, we would concentrate on being more international because it's not only America that we need to be concerned about, it is what is going on all over the globe and all over uh, the world internationally. Uh, business now operate internationally. Uh, whether you're getting uh, items from uh, down, you know, South America or overseas in Europe or anything like that, everything is a chain reaction. Everything is a butterfly effect. And if something happens on the other side of the war, or a world, world, uh, we are definitely influenced by it uh, in one way or another. In most cases, a lot of it has to do financially or economically. And um, now that with what is going on. Um, I think it's paramount that Americans now understand what is going on all throughout the world because it does affect them in one way or another. And it doesn't matter what side of the fence you are, 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 are on in my case because you could be you know, on the left side or the right side. What we have to remember is that we are one nation and even though while in some cases we are really divided on a lot of things and a lot of aspects, the other countries that are, are involved in this war and wars that you're going to see um, that take place time and time again, they're against us as a nation. And they want us to fight with each other because it makes their job a lot easier, because it causes distractions. A lot of people don't understand what's going on. And, uh, and some, some of my own family have that same, same, uh, same sense where they don't understand what, why I do what I do. But when I go over there, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fight against communism and because it does exist and they are against our ways. And there's two superpowers right now that are getting heavily involved with each other. And when I say that, I'm talking about Russia and China. And uh, if they decide to join and band together, then uh, that's going to be something that we are going to have to consider as a threat because this isn't about our country and what we're going through. This is about our world and the world we live in. So with that being said, I think as Americans, we owe it to each other, not only to, to find a medium to where we can all get along and come to solutions that are necessary to for us to prosper as a country but we also have to come to solutions to prosper as a country that can that can be the world's example and can not only help other countries that are in need but become involved with other countries and gain a common ground to keep the peace and maintain our country the way it is because the last thing we want to do in America is have to see our country go to war again. When it comes to social media, I think it does open everybody's eyes here in the United States on what is going on. If they are interested in that, uh, we have things that happen in social media uh, in real time. So when there's something going on, people can see it through social media. So. There are definitely aspects uh, that I agree with when it comes to social media. Uh, when, when social media originally uh, caught on uh, in, in Europe and countries like in Iraq and, and um, uh, other, other foreign, foreign countries like that, social media, social media was a way for them to communicate, for them to uh, let others know about um, uh, incidences that were going on, um, whether they were protesting or whether they were fighting a cause, that's how people communicated overseas, and it really became a great platform for 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 people to bond and and to share information. Um, now, over the past 10, 15 years, I've seen it change to where it's. It, it, it became from one, one kind of almost a, a broadcasting good information to now you don't know what to believe. And that's, that's what scares me is because depending on what initiative you decide to take or go or, or join in on, um, 
you don't you you never can be too sure with if it if the information that you're receiving is accurate or not. So, <clears throat> like anything else, uh, I think uh, social media can be a good platform, but at the same time, I think you just can't believe everything you see. You, I think it's paramount that people do their research, research, and then um, also um, establish. Uh, more information as possible and as much information. When it comes to our local media um, and what's going on with Ukraine, what I've noticed is, is that <clears throat> it's, it continues to change narratives. Um, you know, in the beginning of the war, when everybody was exposed to all the genocide and all the crimes against humanities that were going on over there, everybody was pro helping Ukrainians. They wanted to do whatever they could because that was the right thing to do. Now, what they're now because of the billions of dollars that we have now funded this war, um, it's it's turned to a point where it's become very political, and especially with um, especially with the way our econ our economy is going, it's hard for your average American citizen to be having trouble paying their own bills and seeing all this money going into a country that they've never heard of probably until, until this war started. And they just don't understand the broader scope of why this is happening. Is it, is it right that we're trying to finance this war? Um, I'm just gonna come out and say it because everybody already knows it. And if, if they're denying it, then you know, show me the evidence that, I mean, the evidence is out there. This is a proxy war. And what we're doing right now is, as I mentioned before, we're fighting communism. We're fighting the superpower of the communistic world, world of, uh, of Russia. And what they're doing is they're bonding with China. And with, when that happens, that is going to affect us economically in a, in a in a very, very bad way. So what I tell the common American is that you have to remember what this, what this is really taking place. And even though these are billions and billions of dollars that we are supposedly donating and financing, uh, there's, a big, there's a bigger picture that we're fighting in, and it is for our freedom that still exist and there's a reason why it exists because we have to make sacrifices. That's why I do what I do and that's why we have to do as a country what we are doing right now. And everybody else and all of the countries will follow. After I came back though, it gave me more appreciation of who I am as a father and who I need to be as a father. Um, it made me appreciate my family more than ever, and my children. And it made me realize that if there isn't people like me, and trust me, there's a lot of Americans, uh, there's a lot of people over there besides Americans and other nationalities that are sa making the same sacrifices more than I did. There's some that are fighting. Without people like that, America wouldn't be what it is today. It's fulfilled me in my needs to be a better father, a better person, and a patriot for my country. If anything, if you'd like to help, if you'd like to find out more about uh, our story and what we do, please visit our website you know, at hillcorp.org. And um, uh, if you'd like to contribute, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.